This is Richard Tape. He's on a quest to beat this guy, but he only has one inventory slot. To achieve a fire cape, he'll have to think outside the box and play RuneScape in ways no one has before. It's a long shot, but no one ever said it was gonna be easy. Training range was the main obstacle last episode, and we made some amazing strides with gear upgrades, especially by getting an item I wasn't even sure was possible, the U Short Bow. And with that amazing upgrade, let's just say today's episode is very bizarre. After the U Short Bow, it was time to visit a familiar place. I have too many goals right now. What plan are we on? Plan B, C, D? It could even be D at this point. I'm not sure. There's a lot to do. I'm pretty close to 57 range. I decided to come back to the Minotaurs just to take the U Shortbow out for a spin. But yeah, there's a lot of puzzle pieces still missing. I need better gear. I need higher range. I need higher prayer. I still need some really good ammo, ideally rune arrows for the fire cape. We did find a little goofy and tedious way to get adamant arrows last episode. And there's another arrow. Okay, so it's three in a minute, basically. So 100 180 arrows an hour. It would take probably like eight to 10 hours to get enough for the fire cape, and I don't know if they're gonna be good enough. There's also some other really bizarre roadblocks that I'll reveal later and we can figure them out. It may seem like the most obvious answer to the ammunition problem is last man standing. I can buy rune arrows or addy arrows for points, but it's literally not possible. The one inventory slot plugin is incompatible with last man standing. I don't even know if I could kill anyone without eating food or switching to any other gear. And even if I could, I'd probably probably ban last man standing, but thankfully I don't even have to do that. Last man standing bans itself. It's just not possible. So wow, a range level. Anyway, I'm going to spend another hour here and then I'm taking you on a little field trip. But first, whoa, video sponsor. You ever just think, damn, I wish I had the Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped. Well, I'm here to make your dreams come true because this revolutionary beard styling kit is here to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you've been managing your mane for years or you're just now getting interested in grooming and taking better care of yourself, the Beard Hedger Trimmer will achieve the greatest possible look for you and your beard. The trimmer features a zoom wheel that offers 20 cutting lengths for your beard, all while using the same guard, so no more shuffling and juggling different guard attachments. Welcome to the modern world, and of course, it's waterproof. The Pro Kit also comes with beard oils to help you grow your perfect beard, and of course, beard shampoo and conditioner to keep it fresh and clean. Plus, you get this sick accessory pack along with your Beard Hedger Pro Kit. I can't say enough good things about Manscaped products. I've been using them for years now. I can't recommend them enough, especially if you go over and use code SETTLED right now for 20% off your order plus free international shipping. Yo, click the link in the description. Thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. This is a bit of a multi-part field trip. You see, we're making our way over to pest control, but not for the reason you think. I just jumped. Oh, the people of pest control. People come to pest control for one reason and one reason only pretty much, and that's to get the full void armor sets. I'm not gonna pretend like I haven't thought about it for this account, but I've also done the math and void range just doesn't really compare to a normal dragon hide armor set until about 90 range. Now, of course, we're gonna have to find ways to get that dragon hide armor, which is insanely tough with one inventory slot, but I do think it's the way better option for the fire cape. Obviously crafting is out of the question. The champion's guild is out of the question. We're gonna need to find clever ways to work around that. So why am I at pest control? Well, super simple. I'm gonna be coming back to pest control more times probably, but the pest control shop is not the best way, but a way to train prayer. Getting just one more prayer level gives me eagle eye, which is a 15% boost to range. I also get 560 coins every time I win a pest control game. And you'll see later why I need to start stacking a lot of money. I think one of the toughest things to do on this account is make money so getting any kind of GP stacked up is really really good and pest control helps me with that Okay, my last pest control game. For now, uh, of course, I have 102 points. I definitely need to come back here uh, later, but for now, all I wanna do is use these 100 points to get myself 44 prayer. This was a two hour process for 6,000 XP. 3K XP an hour goes hard. But the amount of bang for your buck you get with this level is actually crazy. 15% bonus to your range. I guess I'll use these last two points and uh, we're pretty close to 59 range too, so. It's time to go to Clan Wars because I literally 
literally cannot function on this account if I keep this money in my one available inventory slot. We already have 6k in here and now we top it up with another 14. I'm really far off of where I want this to be, but I might need a disgusting amount of money to pull something off with one inventory slot. You guys will see later. After pest control, time started to move by really slow. For some reason, the time I spend in this Minotaur enclosure feels about eight times as long as anywhere else, but 60 range, great milestone because it unlocks one of the key component upgrades I'll be going for. The red dehyde body. It is three times better, actually over three times better than the studded body I'm currently wearing, but it's going to be really tough to get. I think I can confidently say I don't think I've let a single arrow despawn on this account yet, and that is what is slowing my training down so bad, but I can't help myself. I, I have to pick up every arrow. There's just no other way. I'm about to end our training arc for a very good while with this final sand crab trip, and then we're actually going to conjure up our first little upgrade in a while. Great news, everyone. I'm out of arrows. All right, I'm going to collect a few hundred arrows here. Should take me about 30 minutes. This is normally an extremely important range level. 61 range unlocks the rune crossbow, but if I can find a way to get rune arrows on here, the U short bow is actually quite a bit better than the rune crossbow, and that calls for a temporary break from range training. We have some work to do. It's time to get to work. I need 15 coins exactly to do this, 10 to open this gate, and 5 to buy one shanty pass, so I'm gonna have to kill some goblins. That's 15 coins. <laughs> okay, good to see the game is listening to me. That is the first goblin I killed and we instantly got 15 coins. Literally perfect scenario because now I can trade these five coins for a shanty pass. So the desert is pretty tricky on this account. Every time I enter, I obviously need the shanty pass in my one inventory slot, so I can't take anything else in with me. My sights right now are set on this little shop in Narda. It sells green dehyde vamp braces for 2,375 coins exactly. And of course, I can only buy things if I have the exact amount so I need to find a way to make 2,375 GP exactly in the desert. And um, that is way easier said than done. We're going to see if we can figure out how to do that. By the way, playtime update, 75 hours on the account already. My first thought is to sell my green dehyde chaps. Okay, 2145. So I still need 230 coins if I sold these. I can get my green dehyde chaps back. So I don't really mind selling them if it gets me the van braces and then I can just get my chaps back. But that is not enough. If I sold my chaps, I still need 230 coins. And how do I get another 230 coins? I'm going to try to safe spot this guy over the cactus and just see if he can drop anything. Although I'm pretty sure that no NPC in this city drops anything at all because they're just meant to be pickpocketed. Damn, these guys don't drop anything. So literally no NPC in this entire village drops anything anything and i literally mean anything so the only way to get money is to pickpocket studded body sells for 467 that's too much and we can't go over we're basically playing a very intricate game of blackjack here just to prove my point every single time you pickpocket a villager in this city you will always fail you have to complete the feud quest and that is not a quest i can complete with one inventory slot i paced around pollen of niche for another 10 minutes as i tried to find some way to get exactly 2375 coins i think if i want these green dehyde van braces i'm gonna have to to do some external work and I might have a plan for that. 42 thieving! Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna be stealing from these fruit stalls for the next five hours of my life because at 55 thieving, I can pickpocket bandits in Pawn of Niche and that's how we can potentially top off our cash stack in the desert to get our van braces upgrade. But I'm not stopping there. I'm gonna go straight for 57 thieving so that I can eventually access the grubby chest, which is a great way to get supplies. Not that I can really hold any supplies in my inventory, but I mean, to get one super restore or one prayer potion, for example. I think it's a nice, safe way of doing that. So time to lock in for five hours. I'll see you. And there's 56 thieving. We're not done yet. You think I'd just jump straight to 57? And there's 57 thieving. We are all done here after five hours. We can now access the grubby chest in the Forthos dungeon. And we can, of course, pickpocket bandits now, which is what we're gonna go do because I really want this van brace upgrade. Okay, new shanty pass purchased. Let's give this a shot. Okay, this is kind of gonna be off the cuff. Uh, I'm not really too sure what I'm doing. Let's pickpocket this bandit. Just kidding. Let's pickpocket this bandit. Okay, that is 40 
coins. Okay, a desert shirt is exactly 40 coins. Dude, my head is spinning trying to get to this number. I I'm trying to get exactly 2375, and I'm just thinking of all these ways that I could possibly get that number, and my head is just running through like 800 possibilities. It's literally like that gift. Okay, let's sell the desert shirt. That's 22 coins. Okay, just pickpocketed a bandit six times. That's 300 coins. We way overshot. Once I sell the green dehyde chaps, we're in too deep. Like, I have to co fully commit and just get the green dehyde van braces at that point. Okay, so this gives me 500, and I can buy an empty bucket pack. Okay, how much can I sell this back for? 280. Look, I'm just gonna stop myself right there and save you some time, okay? The raw footage of me experimenting with coin amounts and purchases is one hour and 46 minutes long. I end up leaving the city twice after taking too much damage, so we're gonna fast forward almost two hours later when I find this. I was reading through the feud quest guide just to see if there's a way I could do the feud quest. And I found that I completely forgot this existed. Can I give this guy as much money as I want? Oh my God, I can. I can literally just keep giving him money to play the snake charm. I had no idea. I'm saved. I'm actually saved. I can get these van braces. I'm so happy right now. Okay, so I for sure can sell these chaps. That gives me 2145. We pick up this and we have 2375. We can make our way over to Narda. I don't know how I missed that. I was pacing around this city for like two hours today and I'm just, my, my brain is actually just rotted out through its core right now. I can't even think straight. I have literally just been trying to find a way to get this exact amount of GP for God knows how long. Please tell me these are 2375. They are, okay. I just, I don't know. I didn't want some random thing screwing this up, but we lost green dehyde chaps and we gained green dehyde van braces. Technically a massive downgrade, but uh, we can get our chaps back. These are plus four range bonus over the leather ones. So very big deal. Now we're gonna have to get the chaps back, which shouldn't be that big of an issue. At least I could just kill the archers in Birthrop again and try to get another pair. I feel so weird walking around without chaps. I've got these summer shorts on it. It's like something's missing. Okay, it's been about half an hour. We have 364 bronze arrows and I ended up running out of arrows last time I tried to get green dehyde chaps from these guys. So so hopefully this is enough. What? No. That is the first archer I've killed. No way. I literally just got here. That's so crazy. Okay, well, I'm glad I sold them now. It was just that easy to get them back. I didn't even have to collect 360 arrows. Okay, well, now we have green dehyde chaps and the van braces. The whole family's here. Very nice. I have no boots still, but after this, I decided to take a brave seven minute journey over to the brutal blue dragons in the current catacombs, and I tried to kill one with the hope of landing one of these insanely rare items, either the blue dehyde body, the blue dehyde van braces, or the dragon medium helm. All of them were a long shot, and I really just wanted to see if I could actually kill the thing. This would go way better for me if I didn't only have one cake as my food. Spoiler alert, I did not kill a dragon. I think it's time we initiate Operation Red Dehyde Body. I didn't want to do this, but I think it's time. Which is going to be extremely tedious and a little risky. I'm going to explain it to you. There is only one viable way for me to get a Red Dehyde Body. Welcome back, crazy archaeologist. If I'm going to upgrade any part of my gear, the body is the biggest bank for my buck. And while the Green Dehyde Body requires the Dragon Slayer quest, every Dragon Hide Body after it doesn't. And with a black dehyde body being pretty much out of the question, red is the next best thing, and I'll have to get it through a 1 in 32 drop from the crazy archaeologist. The problem with this now, of course, is that I have gear on me that I really don't want to lose, and this is in the wilderness. I want to use wind blast for this, so we're gonna need some death runes. I actually have to just collect some gear from scratch entirely for crazy archaeologist, so let's go begin step one. This is a very slow process because every time I want to collect death runes, I need to wait right here for 10 minutes for the aggression timers to go away, and then I can start picking up death runes. I'll probably go for like 300 to 400 runes a trip. The world hop times are actually abysmal right now. Wow, that was 
33 seconds to hop worlds. What the hell, dude? We are at like a 100 death rune per hour rate right now. All right, that's gonna be the last death rune I collect. That was a two and a half hour process. Holy shit, that is really bad. I'm really hoping I get lucky on this red dehyde body because this is looking like a 25, 30 hour grind right now, if not longer. Step two is gonna be to die but i apparently can't i have never had this problem before i guess i have to find a different way to end my existence okay i found a different way to do it i think what we're trying to do right now is risk a bit less going into this grind the items i'm wearing right now took so long to get and risking them in the wilderness is not on my to-do list necessarily okay so now that i'm severely poisoned we teleport over to lumbridge and i should die right in the castle square and this is where the plan gets pretty hectic because we are now on the clock. Okay, so from this point on, we have one hour to return and grab all of our things or they are gone forever. And we're gonna be doing this crazy archeologist grind in one hour segments, basically. Now we're gonna take a quick teleport over to Clan Wars. We're gonna need to withdraw 2000 coins. Now this 2000 GP is completely useless to me because what I need is 1500 GP on the dot. So we're gonna step through the Alcarid gate 50 times with our 2000 coins and that should get us down to 1500. And one more. Okay, now we have to make our way back over to Varrock. This is such a long process. Now we trade our 1500 coins for an air staff so we can cast Wind Blast. Now we need to make our way back over to Lumbridge to pick up only our death runes. And I don't have a teleport still, so I am walking over there. Just gonna take my wizard hat and my death runes. And now we have 46 minutes left before all of our stuff disappears. So we have to go kill Crazy Archaeologist as many times as we can in these 46 minutes and get all of our things back before that timer hits. It took over three hours to prepare for this first trip, so I really hope we can get a few kills here, but more than anything, I just hope we get lucky on this red dehyde body, dude. This could be a really rough one, especially with the despawn timer on the line and potentially getting PK'd out here for our death runes. Whoa, 43 mat. Oh my god, bad time to be celebrating a magic level. My bad. Oh, okay. As you can see, okay, well, there's a muddy key. I don't have any use for that. Nine HP and one prayer point left after that kill. I'm gonna have to come in here and regen my stats after every single kill i'm guessing so this is going to take a little bit of time to walk there and back each time it's making me a little worried for my despawn timer but we're still good at the moment all right second kill looked a lot better anchovy pizza not necessarily something i can use oh 44 magic we like to see it every magic level helps me kill him a bit faster so it is nice kill number three not bad no okay i mean it's not like <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend that could have been the body. I just got excited because I saw red dragon hide, but not exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for that, but in uh, crafted body form. Stats regen once again. Let's go back. Kill number four and also the last one, rune knives. Wow, I am pretty much out of death runes here. Can't get a fifth kill. All in all though, spending almost four hours on four kills is really, really bad. This is looking like a 30 plus hour grind. So I guess it's time to go back. Definitely wishing that there was some better way to get death runes, but this is literally my only way of getting them. Okay, 355 death runes collected. Since I had 30 left over last time, I figure this might get me a fifth kill if I just have an extra 50-ish. So I am back once again to get severely poisoned. Let's get this over with. Once again, we've invested around three hours into this next attempt, and hopefully we can get the red dehyde body on this try. There's another 50 Alcarid gate fees paid. Air staff purchased. Definitely feel like it's worth grabbing the monk robes just to have my prayer last twice as long out there it's uh it's a no-brainer it takes me like an extra minute to walk over here so super easy kill rune crossbows no <laughs> Oh boy, there's so much history. It's on the same table as the red dehyde body, but like I said before, if I can find a way to get rune arrows, rune crossbows just aren't worth it for me. They're not better than the Ushorpo with rune arrows. This wouldn't normally be the case, but I can't get any good bolts for the rune crossbow, so it's just super weak, unfortunately. It's the right choice to make to leave them on the ground. Also, I just want to point out how much more prayer I have thanks to these monk robes. It allows me to get a second kill, so kill number eight for a prayer potion. That's actually so good for me right now. It allows me to stay. I don't have to go back to Clan Wars, reset my stats. That's so nice. And that 
is kill number 10 for a shark and great news i'm a crazy archaeologist champion now so actually the shark is pretty nice i could probably do another kill if i just pay attention to my prayer so and that's another trip down a loop half of key for the final kill five kills this trip over uh almost four hours once again time to collect more death roots i'll see you in four hours and that is the last world hop i collected a lot this time 430 death roots collected that should get me six kills this trip hopefully awaiting my death all right lucky trip number three baby i have the despawn timer set i really hope i can get it here dude i just hate collecting the death runes right now that's like my by far my least favorite part of this because the world hop timers are unfortunately just very very inconsistent we got more rune crossbows still not picking them up but uh we are at 17 kills now and mud runes for kill number 19 that's another trip down 400 death runes used six kills uh, that's that was like over four hours to prepare for that trip because that was a lot of death runes made it back to our stuff And we're pretty much gonna go straight back to the death rune spawn and just prepare for another trip Aside from the fact that I accidentally attacked a wolf. We are done here 406 death runes Um, well, I'm probably gonna go restore but it's more so talking <laughs> about the death runes <laughs> Oh the death runes. Yeah I was like, how are you going to make this work with- <gasps> Yes! Yes! Let's yes! Go! Yes! Yes! That's what I'm dude! talking about, baby! Jim, you did it! I did it! It was me this whole oh time! Oh my god, bro! Oh, that is such a relief, dude. That is such a weight. Li that literally took me 20 hours, dude. And you look handsome as well. And I look handsome! The single biggest upgrade to my range gear that I could have gotten. I'm just going to drop this stuff. I don't need it. I don't care about it. Damn, I'm looking good, bro. This body is 20. 25 range bonus just by itself the studded body was eight so this is literally more than triple the bonuses that the studded body gave me such an insanely good upgrade i am so glad that's done no more wilderness for me i am so happy dude this is such a big win this was actually the first trip where i decided to just let the drainer guards kill me right here instead of going all the way to karamja and getting poisoned this is our new gear setup and it is looking damn good i am so happy with this 94 range bonus and picking up some bronze arrows because we have another little upgrade to chase we're gonna be going back into the ancient cavern where we we got our U Shorpo, but we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be killing water fiends, everyone's least favorite monster, I think. There is one way I can kill these guys. I actually have to wait for the aggression timer to go away, and I can do that by waiting up here on the staircase. There's two things I want from water fiends, the blue dehyde van braces and the rune med helm. Both are honestly pretty rare, and I shouldn't even be hunting them. I'm only here just to see if I can get a lottery ticket, basically. Fun fact, med helms in this game don't have any negative range bonus, making them a perfect little tank helm for rangers which is exactly what i want it for i'll see you in 10 minutes and then i'll show you the safe spot so it's actually super simple this guy spawns on that tile every single time and this is a perfect safe spot to kill these guys with unfortunately my dps is so bad and these guys have such high defense that these kills are very long and my arrows are probably going to start disappearing but i just wanted to see if i could get the blue dehyde van braces or the rune med helm either one i'd be super happy with okay what's our first drop Nothing! Okay, I mean, we got vows of water. I don't need those, but... Pfft, no way, dude. Four kills! It took four kills to get something I wanted. That's one in 64. What is wrong with me today? This is unreal. Look at this beauty. No negative range bonus. It's perfect. Okay, well, I honestly wanted the blue dehyde vams a little more, but I'm super happy to have gotten this. This is such a great item to have. This is probably going to be what I take into the fire kit because I have no way to heal myself. So like making mistakes is so brutal. Having any extra defense is going to be so helpful. That's going to be my last kill. I'm pretty happy with this though. We got 8k. I burned through all my arrows pretty much and we got the rune med helm. It's time to take you on a journey. My journey to a obtain the impossible boots the boots that this game does not want me to have on this account this is an incredibly special story to me and it begins a couple weeks ago when i first wanted to obtain a pair of boots for this account the boots of lightness any account can obtain these within about 15 minutes of spawning into the game they're located in the basement of the temple of ikov dungeon these are some of my favorite boots in the game by the way i wore them when maxing my main account they reduce your weight they look good i wanted these on richard tape so what's the twist here why are they impossible to get well a lot of things make this impossible considering i only have one inventory slot roadblock number one the light source to get into the basement and grab the boots you need a light source so you might be thinking okay get a light source question for you how do you light something 
without the second inventory slot for a tinderbox? Well, you can't, right? So naturally, I started to look into wearable light sources so that I didn't need to have anything in my inventory. I promise you that every single wearable light source I looked into had some sort of roadblock that made it impossible without a second inventory slot. Well, at this point, I'm pretty hopeless. I can't light a candle, I can't wear a light source, and then I thought, wait, What's the point of even thinking about this because roadblock number two, if my only inventory slot is a light source, how do I pick up the boots? I don't have any inventory space to pick them up. This is where I gave up. Or did I? Is that what you think this is about? Giving up? You think I'd give up on the boots of lightness? Really? How dare you? I hit the drawing board again after two weeks because I had just found the first solution to the roadblock. I know that no human in the history of RuneScape has needed to light something with one inventory space before, and to that I said, watch me. So we trade exactly four coins for an unlit torch, okay. I've tried this with a lot of different things. I tried this with a candle, but will it work on a torch? Can I use this on the range? Oh my god, yes you can. Step one solved. I can light something with one inventory spot, oh my god, and I can actually drop it in its lit form. This is really special, actually. This is a really special discovery. I can have a light source on this account, but how do I pick up the boots if there's this torch in my inventory? I still can't figure that out. Honestly, though, did anyone know you could do that? Because I had no idea you could light a torch that way. That is so cool to me, dude. This method of lighting a torch wasn't even on the wiki, so I imagine this is a very unknown method of lighting something, although extremely niche and probably only good for my situation. The next roadblock honestly seemed insurmountable. I'm very aware of how light source mechanics work in dark spaces. To pick up the boots, I'd need to get rid of my light source, but the game physically doesn't let you get rid of your light sources when in dark spaces. This can be seen in the Lumbridge Swamp Caves. The game knows you'd be left without a light source, and it doesn't let you drop it or put it out. After some digging and a little experimenting, however, I noticed that the Temple of Ikov basement was coded entirely different to other dark spaces in the game. In fact, I think it might have been the first dark space in the game. This basement predates the Lumbered Swamp Caves by almost three full years, and it was made in a bit of a janky way. The devs created two instances of the same exact room and transferred you between them based on whether you had a light source or not, and the dark version of the room didn't even have the boots in the corner. And so I noticed that it did let me extinguish my candle down here, but would immediately teleport me to the dark instance of the basement close to the staircase. So I had a theory. If I can extinguish and drop my light source in the same game tick that I pick up the boots of lightness, therefore trading the slots that they're occupying, I could theoretically be teleported out and still have the boots in my inventory all in one game tick. Could this really work? That's what I wanted to figure out. So I just tabled my U short post so that I could keep this sword on me. I'm gonna need a sharp weapon to cut through the web that the boots are sitting in. Let's light our torch, uh, which I believe is the only light source this is possible with. I still am fascinated by this. We still have some time. I just have to be precise because as soon as I drop my torch, I completely lose it. I'm gonna have to do this all over again. So we have to be precise and quick. Yes, it's actually possible. I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure if it was going to be possible, but I got him. We traded the torch for the boots. Minus five kilograms from the weight, and we now have a pair of boots. Very, very nice. I'm so happy, dude. I know I've said it already, but I just didn't think that was going to be possible. I have a pair of boots that I actually couldn't imagine myself wearing on here. It was a little risky, but we got our Yushorpo back, and we have everything now. We have everything we could possibly ever want in life except good ammunition and maybe a cape, but I'm actually super happy with the weight reduction from these boots. It's gonna come in handy. So this was just such a fun thing to do. Such a fun thing to figure out. Oh, I guess I'll be seeing you in a very long finale episode. What are you doing? You just gonna sit there or are you gonna subscribe? Click on the video that's next to me. <laughs> that looks good. What, are you gonna watch it or not?